Hey everybody, I'm Argelfump, and this is the 2022 Nancy Drew Games Mega Marathon. I'm Michael, I'm going to be playing through all of the Nancy Drew Games this year. This is game number four. Hi there, it's me, Nancy Drew. You're just in time for my latest mystery, Treasure in the Royal Tower. Choose your difficulty level to start off. If you're new to adventure games, you might want to click the tutorial button first for a few tips on how to play the game. I think I know how to play the games by now at, uh, at this point. Alrighty, so let's play on senior detective mode. Why not? Dear George, so much for my Wisconsin ski vacation. I arrived here at Wickford Castle last night just before a blizzard swept in. The mountain is completely shut down and the surrounding roads are closed. I think I'm one of the few guests who made it to the castle at all. The place is huge and old and slightly creepy under the circumstances. You should hear this wind. What's more, the owner, Christy Lane, my father's friend, is away on business. I tried to ask the caretaker, Dexter Egan, how I could contact her, but he said he didn't know. Doesn't that seem odd? I couldn't help feeling like there was something he wasn't telling me. All this makes me a little nervous, but I'm determined to enjoy myself. After all, this is a vacation, right? I have big plans to explore the castle. That Ezra Wickford, the original owner, must have been quite a character to have built such an extraordinary place. It's filled with strange, dead-end corridors, for one thing. And I notice one of the towers is totally different from the other ones. Of course, I'll have to save some time to meet the Jacques Brunet, the French ski instructor. Tell Best she'll be the first to know if he's half as gorgeous in person as he looks on his website. So, George, I guess things never quite go according to plan. But at least this time, the culprit is just a snowstorm. Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy. Now all I need is a mailbox. Alrighty, so this is Nancy's room key, and I think in this, what do we have? The locker combination, locker 310, combination 517. Just have to remember that. You also kind of have to remember the room number. It's okay, I've got that memorized. No worries whatsoever. We have a menu over here. Key lime pie. Yum. Okay. I want some pie now. Alrighty. So, hey, hey, hey. How, how's it going, everybody? We, we having fun here? Looks like we've got 159 people in the chat. Jeez. We just started and we've already got, like, a large crowd here. So here's Sassy Detective Magazine. I think we open it for a clue on how to do fingerprinting. This is how we do fingerprinting. So we're gonna have a fingerprinting puzzle. So when we touch things, the oil on our skin is left behind on the surface of the things we touched. Our fingerprints have a unique pattern on them. Somebody says we should get some pie. Yum. Yeah, I, I mean, I know I was just talking about pie, but now I double want pie. Anyway, um, uh, let's, let's, let's forget about pie. Gonna go outside, gonna have the pie, and why, 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 why? I think this is a dead end, actually, this area. Dead end. Wah, wah, wah. Well, that's just not fair. All right, so let's go uh, meet Dexter. He's one of the uh, various characters we can meet. Generally, I, I meet him first off in the game. Right over here, Dexter, the angry dad man. Hello, Miss Drew. Did you get squared away upstairs? Yes, Mr. Mr. Man, I uh, have this uh, letter for you to mail. All square. I just need a stamp to send this letter, and then I'll be off to explore the castle. Well, I can take your letter, but the mail's not going anywhere for a while. It's snowing like there's no tomorrow out there. So explore all you want. Take the grand tour. But forget about the library. It's off limits. What? What happened? What happened there, dude? Off limits? Someone vandalized our historic library. Really turned the place upside down. The owner, Miss Lane, 
She's gonna be pretty upset. Why would anyone want to vandalize the library? I have no idea. I straightened up in there before check-in yesterday and everything was fine. Now it looks like a bomb went off. Books everywhere and somebody hacked a big hole in one of the walls. I locked the place up and called the police, but who knows when they'll be able to get here. Wow, a hole in the wall? What do you think they were looking for? I can't tell, but somebody's definitely after something. How do you know? How do you know? Well, this Professor Hotchkiss just called me in a terrible flap, saying our room's been robbed. I went up there, but she wouldn't open the door to talk about it. Wouldn't even tell me what was missing. So what's she want me to do about it? Well, I don't know. She just wanted you to listen to her problems and hug her and make her feel better. What strange behavior. I'm curious. I wonder if she might open the door to talk to me. Well, Hotchkiss has a pair of ski boots in the basement. The Frenchman's been working on him for her, but he won't deliver him. Says he's a ski instructor, not a bellhop. I hate to ask this, but if you could grab those boots and bring them up to her, it might smooth her feathers. Sure would smooth mine. Okay, see ya, Mr. Egan. You're a trooper. Yeah, so it sounds like he's kind of a mean, grumpy guy, and then Jock downstairs is like, Excuse me, I am not your bellhop. I would be staying down here, meh, meh, meh. Just everybody in this game is kind of angry and grumpy. That's what I'm getting. Did Hotchkiss get her boots? No. Not yet, Mr. Egan. Hmm. <laughs> That's a shame. I think there's something wrong with my radiator. It hisses and there's a clanging noise too. Could you check it out for me? Sorry about that inconvenience, but you're just gonna have to sit tight for a while. I'm the only one on duty while the owner's away. And around here, it seems like even if it ain't broke, it still needs fixing. Last time I checked, there were only 24 hours in a day. Sorry, not yet. So, you know, I couldn't help but notice you're not really doing anything at the moment, and you've got plenty of free time to fix my radiator. So, how long have you been working here? A while. Okay, see ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Like, what is he doing all day? He's clearly not working, he's just complaining. Maybe he's just writing a diary about how angry he is. Oh well, let's talk to Lisa. Lisa's right here. Hi, I'm Lisa. Did you hear what happened? Someone broke into the library and vandalized it. Dexter locked it up. He's saying the culprit must be one of us in the castle. Can you believe it? Why would it be one of us? Apparently, the only guests who made it here before the blizzard set in are you, me, and Professor Hotchkiss. Uh, and then there's the on-staff suspects, Dexter, our friendly desk clerk, and Jacques Brunet, ski instructor extraordinaire. Yeah, there are only three guests at this hotel. Why, why is Dexter so busy? What do you know about Professor Hotchkiss? Oh my gosh, wait till you hear this! Hotchkiss is this nutty old woman who's always typing and talking to herself in her room. I was walking past her door earlier, and I heard her screaming that her room had been robbed. Oh no, what was stolen? Wow, did she say what was stolen? Not that I could hear. She just kept wailing, my theory, my theory. I think she teaches history, or maybe a foreign language. I thought I heard a couple of French words pop out of her mouth. But don't quote me on that either. I only barely passed Spanish in high school. Habla Espanol? Hardly. I'm just a humble photojournalist covering weird old mansions in the Midwest. And this place is one of the weirdest. Did you know Ezra Wickford, the original owner, shut himself away in here for like 50 years? I mean, this place is technically a castle, not a mansion, but it is just crazy weird. You must know a great deal about this place. Not really. But I sure want to get into that tower that came from France. It'd be great for my story. Too bad Wickford sealed it off. Maybe it's his ghost making those creepy noises at night. Creepy noises? What noises? Oh, just your average bump in the night sound effects. It's probably just Dexter trying to spook up the hotel for the publicity. I mean, did we stumble onto the set of As the Castle Turns or what? Well, you probably want to get settled. I wonder what we're going to do with ourselves while we're all cooped up in this place. Well, you can just sit there. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Stay warm. Stay warm indeed. All right. Oh, hey, Dexter. What's up, Dexter? 
no, he's still playing around. <laughs> Answering phone calls. All right, I got a phone call. Great, I bet it's Miss Lane uh, with the pizza delivery. Huh? No, I don't care about my car's extor extended warranty. Hotchkiss. Hey, it's me, Hotchkiss. Hotchy. Wow, she's totally ignoring me. What a meanie. I wish you would talk to Nancy. That would be fun. Like, we could be friends. Here is... What do you call it? I think this is a dead end. This one goes nowhere. Nowhere? Oh. Why do they have so many weird dead ends in this place? Let's see if we can find the other one. I think there's one down here as well. Yes, yes. I've hit the wall. Okay, so let's solve the uh, puzzle of breaking into the library because I want to break into the library here. Let's break into that valuable library. So I think the way we do that is... Which room is mine? 205? Yeah, there's no boots. She won't answer if you don't have her boots. Hotchkiss is very busy writing stuff right now. This is another game with an alarm system. Oh, that's cool. Let's let's go let's go with like ten at night. Maybe the dead ends were built to confuse trespassers. Okay. I guess that makes some sense. Hear those creepy noises. Hotchkiss, are you still typing? Really? Yo, professor! Hang out with me! Be my friend! Guess she doesn't want to be my friend. So, to solve the library puzzle, we need to sneak around Dexter's desk. There is something here. I believe it's a key. There's a key to the library right there. Great. Let's check this. His to-do list. Okay, uh, shut down the ski lift. Check the emergency generator. Hey, get Jock Brune to fix the boots. Refund the guests who canceled. Uh, snow plows? Try to reach Christy again. Change the library alarm code. Change the bulbs in the tower. Wait. Wait, the royal tower? Does he, like, regularly go up to the royal tower and change the light bulbs? That's really nice of him. Replace the filter in the vent shaft. Keep searching! Uh, get the boots back to prof. Check the basement circuit breaker. Get dinner orders from guests. All right, all right. I don't think he ever updates his list of things to do, by the way, so it's not like he gets a dinner order every night for me, which would be nice. I'd like it if he did, but he does not. So the second thing we need is a... Um, toothbrush? No, not a toothbrush. Let's visit the other dead end, which is this way. Hello there, dead end. My name's Nancy Drew. <laughs> all of these. Yep, all the dead ends. So, ski rental. We go to the ski rental, which is over here. And we get that little brush thingy. And let's check out Nancy's locker. It was 517 or something? Where's that locker? I'm lost. Here. It's here. Locker 310, 517. The combination is 517, but it's not working. Oh, it's not working. I've always wondered about these. Like, we've got Dexter and Jacques and Christy, but who are Sammy and Mary? And why are they not working here? I I don't know. It's 
Come on, Sammy. Come on, Mary. You wanna, you wanna be cool and help out. That is the circuit breaker. Let's actually take the, take the elevator. Show off what the elevator looks like. Ooh, they've got an old-fashioned elevator. If you want to elevate, all you gotta do is call. Step in, and we're gonna go to the first floor. Sammy, Sammy and Mary got stuck at one of the dead ends. They're trying to find their way through here, but they just can't find it. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna use my key here. I'm gonna grab this. That gave me some dust. And I'll use the dust here to figure out the special code, which I believe is three star seven eight. That's what my memory is telling me. No, not eight. Uh oh. Three star seven eight. I think I might be too late. Well, well, well. Oh, no. Look who returned to the scene of the crime. You're out of here. Didn't you hear Dexter coming? Yeah, but I didn't know what to do. I guess I just froze. It's not like you, Nancy. You always know how to make an emergency exit. Maybe you really do need some rest. Who can think of rest and relaxation when there's a mystery to solve? Oh, somebody said it's three star seven two. Sorry, everyone. My mistake. I got the first three digits, at least. Oh, well. Silly me. Okay, I have the dust. And now I'm going to use the dust here. I do believe the first time you need to use the dust everywhere. That is such an annoying beep. Got it. Okay, three star seven two. We have it. I don't know what the other buttons do. Like apparently there are three zones. Wonder where those zones are. You think they would put a security system in the valuable royal tower with all the gold and everything? But I guess not. Whatever. Got some books here. The diary of Hans Axel von Fersen. He was a Swedish-French soldier. Thanks to everybody for translating this. Okay, June 3rd, 1791. The trouble in France continues to mount. The revolutionaries have forced the king and queen to return to Tuileries in Paris, where they are living like virtual prisoners. I am working with the counter-revolutionaries to help the royal couple escape to England. Everything's arranged. False passports, a carriage, disguises. Just after midnight on Tuesday, the king and queen, dressed as servants, will slip out of the city by coach. I will be their driver. I have instructed Marie to bring her jewels with her. If they are stopped, she may be able to bargain with the revolutionaries, her diamonds for her life. I have no peace. I can have no peace until I know she is safe beyond the treachery of this revolution. Alas, what a curse at night! I had not expected that Commander Le Bouffe, Marie's most outspoken enemy, would be present at the checkpoint in Varennes. Marie tried to negotiate, but the scoundrel took her jewels and threw her at the mercy of the revolutionary apes anyway. I was helpless to stop him. She and Louis were escorted back to Paris like common criminals. The situation is, is grim indeed. I still cannot speak to the Queen, as she's kept under full-time surveillance. I'm awaiting orders from Vienna to, as to what to do next, but I, I fear it may be too late to save Marie or her husband. The thought of her suffering, it destroys me. Yes, very much destroys him. Poor Hans. Oh, Hans. You know, he loved Marie, but I'm sorry, Hans. If only there was someone out there who loved you. 
She just did not love him back. Alrighty, let's check this out. I want to read those papers, but I guess I can't. An Atlas of the United States. Wisconsin is 90 by 45. Hooray! And we're right here. We're at like the north part of Wisconsin. Portrait of Marie. Nice. I believe that's for a puzzle here. 90. And then I press the top. This says minus 15, 10, and minus 5. Whoa, what's this? Purple Hearted Queen by Professor Hotchkiss. Traditional history books. No, that's not what she sounds like. Um, I've seldom mentioned it, but there's ample evidence that Marie Antoinette's favorite color was purple. This is not an insignificant fact, as some might think, but one that may offer great insight into the character of a queen who I believe has been hastily and unfairly judged, both in her lifetime and up to today. Purple is traditionally considered to be a color of majesty or royalty, but this does not mean it was just a color of wealth and power. On a deeper level, purple symbolizes loyalty, dignity, wisdom, and truth. When Marie had her portrait painted by the master Marcel Bonnet, she chose to pose holding a purple rose. Chose to pose purple rose. Wow. Instead of wearing the extravagant diamond tiara that King Louis XVI had given her, she knew that it would be insensitive to wear such a tiara at a time when the French masses were starving and angry. By choosing the rose, Marie acted with wisdom and loyalty to her people. One of the last acts of her short life, Marie chose to wear purple slippers for her walk to the guillotine, convicted of crimes for which she never confessed. Crimes that were never proven, Marie accepted her death sentence with resignation. However, she walked to meet her death in her favorite purple slippers. She expressed her unshakable dignity and her silent protest as to the truth of her innocence. Alrighty then. I always thought this was a weird fireplace. I guess that is a fireplace. It just looks like a bell to me. But whatever. A sly rabbit will have three openings to its den. So what was it? Nine, minus 10? Minus 15? Why do I already not remember? 10? 5? And then 15? Maybe? Nope. So minus 15 and then 10 and then minus 5. I know those are numbers. Got it. Okay, second try. Excellent. And is there anything else to look at over here? Aha, here we go. This is a chess set which has been brutally destroyed. True story is behind famous portraits. This is a fantastic portrait. And she refused to wear her tiara. She referred to it as my crown of ruination, though nobody knows what she meant by that. When it came time to have her portrait painted, she insisted on posing away from the Palace of Versailles in the tower room at the Chateau Rochemont in France, where she often visited to escape the growing turmoil in Paris. She refused to be painted wearing the tiara. King Louis was furious, but Marie would not budge. She chose to ornament herself with a purple rose, not just a flower, but a symbol of her willful defiance of her husband's wishes. When the portrait was finished, she gave it to the Rochemonts, in appreciation of their loyal friendship. Shortly thereafter, the revolution erupted in full. When Marie Antoinette and her husband were arrested, the queen refused to reveal the whereabouts of her tiara. Even after her execution, neither the tiara nor the magnificent jewels it contained were ever found. To this day, speculation and heated debate continues about what became of the crown of ruination. The painting is now in the hands of a private American collector. In fact, it's on the floor right behind you. Why don't you take a look and see it, Nancy? Oh, so it is. We really should take care of that famous painting. Yeah, really. And these are the vents. 
vent, 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 vent. And we climb down the vents. We have this thing. It's stuck. But it's stuck. It's stuck. So we can't actually go there or do anything. Hey, this is what elevators look like on the inside. Cool. I guess. Jump to the vent. I, I, I would not want to do this in real life. This seems like a very, very dangerous jump. Ah, 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 uh-oh. Somebody's coming in. Hide! Okay, okay, I hear you. Darn, you crazy old man. I know you hid that thing around here somewhere. The least you could have done was left me a hint. time to clean this up you don't have time to do anything Dexter you hardly ever work okay so that was Dexter he's clearly looking for something hidden inside here I believe the hidden room is right here how did he miss it this is pretty obvious and open how did you miss this secret hidden room Dexter all right we're gonna grab the lighter and turn on the light Time passes, and we get this key. What is this thing, I wonder, on the left? I don't even know what that is. I don't know what these things are, for that matter. The castle's been empty for many years now. These hallways just echo in vain. And oh, how I miss you, my one-time son. My anger's dissolved into pain. I still don't know why you pilfered my wallet. The money could hardly have mattered. That fifty dollars I'd have given you twice. But instead, my poor heart you shattered. If only I could find you, we'd patch it all up. Talk through it as dad and son should. Perhaps you meant only to test my love. Perhaps you felt misunderstood. I want you to know that your old man forgives you. Old bygones are bygone with me. So I've left you one keepsake to remember me by. You'll sure be delighted to see. Go out to the garden, my old thinking spot, my refuge in hours of dread. Your luck charm is stashed where no stranger would look in the back of my old troubled head. So this is goodbye, dear Dexter. Farewell. You offered me much needed joy. And I'll never forget all the laughter you brought me, my darling young rascally boy. Ha ha ha! Alrighty then. That is clearly what Ezra Wickford sounded like. Definitely. He's got a bunch of bugs too. Gross. They all have names. Priscilla, Biff, Skeeter, Jean-Luc, Sue Ellen, Rutherford. Rutherford? Oh, okay. Gorgoth, Dragmore, Tom, but Jasmine, Bootin, Roscoe, Pearl, Mortimer, Jethy, Priscilla, Derry, and Clarence. Hi, Clarence. How's it going? Haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Okay, so the very easily found secret room has basically that puzzle. So there's something cool that we need to find in his thinking spot. This looks kind of cool, too. Like, is that a movie? Is that like a poster or something? I don't know. When he was good, he was very good. So Dexter used to be a very good boy. Like he won a, a spelling bee and got to go to Washington, D.C. He got a certificate of merit. Nice, for recycling during the war. And he was great at attending. So this is what Dexter used to look like as a little boy. So cute. He had hair back then. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. But when he was bad, he was horrid. Dear Pop, I'm sorry for taking $50 out of your wallet without asking. I know it was wrong. I know you're very disappointed in me. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I'm sorry. Your son, Dexter. But that is a sad excuse for stealing. Mr. Wickford, we're sorry to report your son, Dexter, 
was caught on the school grounds last night throwing rocks at the gymnasium windows. This is the second time he's been caught attempting to destroy school property. We fear Dexter's becoming a danger to himself and others. We have no choice but to expel him. Please contact us if you have any questions regarding this matter. Sincerely, Harold Burmy, school principal. So he's a vandal, a thief. Selling, he got arrested for selling bad checks, false IDs. Well, he had bad checks and false IDs. And, huh, Ezra, I, I changed your will according to the directions you gave me in our meeting of May 21st. In the event of your death, Dexter will have no recourse to inherit Rickford Castle or any of your state or financial holdings. Furthermore, he will be unable to claim any association with Orith or capitalize upon your name or uh, reputation. I'm currently proceeding with your request to annul your adoptive relationship to Dexter and to swear any subsidiary legal ties you may have to him. I will notify you when these procedures are finalized. On a personal note, allow me to say how sorry I am to hear of, of Dexter's criminal criminal conviction. And I urge you, it, don't blame yourself. It's not your fault. He's just an evil monster. Some children just turn out to be bad eggs. Nonetheless, while your disappointment must be profound, I commend your prudence and pragmatism in the decisions you've made to protect your state. Yours faithfully, Peter Rockford. Okay, so this was this was a long time ago, though. 1949. Clearly, Ezra repented and uh, did not... What do you call it? Now, now he no longer hates Dexter because he wrote that really nice poem for Dexter. Really, really nice poem and left a secret treat for him. I really wish we got to examine the rest of the library. I mean, that looks cool. So, I mean, obviously the culprit was searching the library and bashed in the hole in the wall. Why did the culprit not bother to search the second floor of the library when searching it? I don't think it matters what the culprit's looking for. Why did the culprit only search in the one area and, and not the others? It is most peculiar. Alrighty, let's take the elevator back to Nancy's room and go to daytime and let's talk to some people about some things, shall we? I don't think this is my room. My room... No, wait. My room is this direction? These hallways can be hard to navigate. Here we go. My room. I don't like to say why room, but it is my room. Let's go to uh, 11 o'clock. People should be hanging around at 11. Let's meet our buddy. Let's just meet everybody. Buddy, 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 bud. So Dexter, hey Dexter, I found out all about your secret dad and your past. Um, wanna tell me about it? Did Hotchkiss get her boots? No. Not yet, Mr. Egan. Hmm, <laughs> that's a shame. So, did you grow up around here? You could say that. Did you know the original owner, Ezra Wickford, when he lived here? You could say that. Well, you, you were like his adopted son, right? What was he like? They call it the past for a reason, okay? Because it's over. Yeesh. Okay, see ya, Mr. Egan. You're a trooper. I sure am. All right. Okay, so now let's uh, talk to Lisa. <laughs> so what'd you find in the library? Whoa, 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 the library? Oh, please. She figured out I was in the library. No, 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 I wasn't there. Please, Lisa. You know it's off limits. Oh, come on, Nancy. You've been on the prowl. I can tell by the sparkle in your eye. My eyes are always sparkling because I'm just a happy, happy person. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Aw, you're no fun. Okay, so did you read Professor Hotchkiss's book? Did you know Professor Hotchkiss published a book on Marie Antoinette? Yeah, I looked her up on the internet. The critics pan the book. Looks like other historians think she's a real quack. Aw, poor Hotchkiss. I'm dying to find a way into that tower. 
Where do they usually hide the secret entrances in weird old Midwestern mansions? <laughs> I guess I should know, shouldn't I? Too bad most of the places I've covered aren't any weirder than imitation butter. I wish you'd hurry up and find it, though, so we can check it out. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Keep me posted. Yeah, was Lisa spying on me or following me or does she have security cameras <laughs> trained on me? That's weird. Well, let's meet our good buddy Dexter. We've got to get some boots from, not Dexter, Dexter, um, Jacques. Yes, let us meet Jacques here and we will get some boots from Sir Jacques. He will be able to tell me what is going on here. All right, where is he? He should be over here. Aha! We have found you, Jacques. It is good that you are here because I wish to speak to you. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je m'appelle Jacques Brunet. So, what brings you to beautiful Wisconsin? Why does he put the word beautiful in scare quotes? It's like, oh, beautiful Wisconsin. <laughs> it is actually quite ugly. I don't think it's that ugly. It's, it's been nice so far. Hi, I'm Nancy. I came to ski, but it looks like I'm going to have to find other ways to entertain myself. I told Mr. Egan I would bring Professor Hotchkiss her boots. Are they ready? Uh, yes, I fixed her boots. Uh, but you should be relaxing by the fire, sipping cocoa, Nancy. Not running errands for Dexter. Why is it you American girls never know how to separate business from pleasure? What about you, Jacques? Do you give skiing lessons in Wisconsin for business or pleasure? Well, uh, with the weather so terrible, I suppose I get neither. But you see, I am here for Isabelle, mon petit chou. She is an American studying at the university in Madison, and I've asked her to marry me. That is excuse enough to be in Wisconsin, n'est-ce pas? And besides, I am not the first French work of art to end up here. Work of art? What are you talking about? I am speaking of the Queen's Tower, of course. It comes from the Chateau Rochemont in a town in France near where I grew up. Didn't you notice it when you drove in? Yes, I did notice. What an amazing feat it must have been to take that thing apart and put it back together. The French are talented people, Nancy. We are good at many things, not just making wine and romance, you know. But tell me, uh, how will you spend your time here, Nancy? I don't want to make romance with you, Jacques. I just want some boots, and then I just want to be on my merry little way. I'm dying to have a look inside that library. I heard it was vandalized. Do you know anything? Nancy, a pretty girl should not worry herself with this type of thing while she is on vacation. Uh, I should warn you, Dexter is very protective of this place. He does not take kindly to people snooping around where they should not. Don't worry, I already saw that death scene. I, I, I'm fine, I'm fine. Don't worry, Jacques. The last thing I want to do is get myself grounded. Ciao! Ciao! Where are those boots? Oh good, he gave me the boots. Ah, Nancy. Como ça va? Tell me about these boxes you're making. Tell me about these boxes you're making. When I am not skiing, I need some other way to express myself. So voila! I make these hot boxes for keeping secrets safe. I'm sure you have many secrets, Nancy. It's weird, that's the only conversation we have about those hope boxes he's making. Why is he making them? Why? I don't know. They never get mentioned again. It's very strange. Dexter told me the combination to my locker, number 310, is 517. I tried it, but the locker won't open. Hmm, Dexter must be confused. Because I think that is the combination for number 311. I'll try 311. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Alrighty, 517, locker 311. Let's do this. Dexter just messed up, I guess. Poor Dexter. Five. One. And then let's go to seven. Okay, this is clearly the wrong locker. We've got somebody with hideous yellow boots. Banana yellow boots. That hat. I don't know, because this is Lisa's locker. What would Lisa look like with that hat on? That's what I'm wondering. And uh, these must be her photo things. Why she keeps that in her skiing locker? I have no idea. Okay, yeah. This is for Helen Carp of uh, Jacksonville. Hmm, what about this? This is for, um, 
Velma Dinkley of, of Florida, Seattle. Wait, wait, Florida and Seattle? Florida and Seattle are on opposite sides of the country. Maybe that's place of birth. I, I don't know. What are the other passports? Okay. Okay, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Yeah, that's Lisa. That's Lisa, definitely. She's got a lot of fake IDs. Illinois ID, Sunshine State. Okay, birth date. Um, what? Wait, wait. February 30th? There's no February 30th. That February is only 28 days long. I don't understand. How is that possible? And you, you really shouldn't be putting your social security out for, for people, people are just going to steal your identity here. Okay, um, height, um, seven foot frame, rats along her back. All right, gotcha. Oh, also, this is a letter which indicates Lisa reads fluent Spanish, so she was clearly lying about not knowing Spanish. Where did the music go? I don't know. Either way, we should probably bring her hat back to her at some point. That sounds like a good idea. And let's go to Professor Hotchkiss. Deliver the boots, bring Lisa her hat back. Why isn't that a chore? Get the hat. It's too dark. I should take the elevator. Oh no. So Lisa, what's with this fake ID? Well, if it isn't Dexter's little Cinderella, Ew, if it isn't Dexter's little Cinderella. Well, okay, he kind of is making me do all of his chores, but that's still a mean nickname. Unless you're trying to say I'm the most beautiful woman in the kingdom and the prince will fall in love with me and give me a bunch of money. In which case, it's not an insult. Yeah, now I'm so confused. Anyway, what do you know about Jacques? What do you know about Jacques Brunet? Didn't you watch the last Winter Olympics? He's France's big cheese of skiing. He holds the record for the 500 meter slalom, but he totally choked at the games. I guess he's washed up now, but at least his looks haven't gone down the tubes. So tell me more about the life of a photojournalist. It must be very glamorous at times. Well, there's nothing glamorous about the pay, I can tell you that much. There was a little mix up with the lockers and I accidentally opened yours. Yeah, and? Somebody's saying I should have stolen the hat and just started wearing it right in front of Lisa. That would have been, uh, that would have been pretty mean, huh? Well, I was kind of confused. I was just trying to see whose stuff was in there, and I found a bunch of IDs in your bag. They all had your picture and other people's names on them. A savvy photojournalist always carries a couple of alternate identities, Nancy. When you're working under deadline, you don't always have time to play by the rules. I'm sure you know what I mean. I don't really know what you mean. I always follow the law. I don't break any laws, except for laws against stealing, because I steal things all the time. But that's okay, because I'm a detective. Does your job take you to exotic, far-off places? Well, there is a lot of travel. Too bad I'm so useless with foreign languages. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Stay warm. We really should be able to confront her about the fact that, no, she's actually really good with foreign languages and she's been lying to us the whole time. But no, no, that's not, that's not something we can do. Alrighty, we've got Hotchkiss's boots. Now she should be able to talk to us. We do have, what, what is it? So we're like 45 minutes into the game. Um, we're just getting started with the big chore run right now. Let's do all the chores. It takes you... I think about 10 minutes, um, if you go really quickly. That's about how long it takes to do all these chores in this game. Yes, hello! Is that Jacques with my boots? Professor Hotchkiss? My name is Nancy. I'm sorry to hear that your room was robbed. Could I ask you a couple of questions about the incident? Beep! Professor Hotchkiss is not available at this time. Thank you and goodbye. Beep! So Professor Hotchkiss, I mean, uh, if Lisa's born in 1974, she would be about 47 years old now, right? No, 48, 48 years old. That must be my boots at last! Your boots are coming right up, Professor Hotchkiss, I promise. What are you working on in there, anyway? Oh, good. Uh, boots, fine. Uh, thank you, thank you. Everything is fine. 
just leave the boots at the door, please. <laughs> oh, and it seems I'm out of change. I'll just have to tip you the next time, Mandy. No tip is necessary, Professor Hotchkiss. I don't actually work here. My name's Nancy Drew. I heard your room was robbed, and I'd like to find out what was taken so that Mr. Egan can report it. Everything's under control, dear. Nothing to report. Thank you for my boots. My poor feet have been feeling so exposed. I think I need to leave the boots down here. And she just ignores me. Wow. What? Hey, 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 Hodgkiss! What, what? Excuse me? Ah, oh, we just missed her. Wow, she waited until my back was turned and then just stole the boots. Wow. If only Nancy had just turned around immediately, she would have seen Hotchkiss. Oh, well. Hey, Jock. I, I mean, Dexter. I did your job, buddy. Now you're going to fix my uh, radiator, Can right? I help you? About my radiator, Mr. Egan. Do you think you'll be able to fix it anytime soon? Sorry, not yet. Hotchkiss called to report that she got her boots. But now I'm told that the light is out in the back stairwell. Could you check the circuit breaker in the basement and make sure it's working? Uh, jeez. Some vacation this is turning into. Some vacation. No, oh, now I need to fix the breaker, the circuit breaker. It's okay. It's not too hard to find that circuit breaker. Let's go. Yeah, come on, computer mouse. Work with me here. Yes. I never really know how to work circuit breakers. They're tough to figure out. I mean, both in real life and in video games. Let's see. I think that says off, and that... Like, I can barely read these words. Let's just go with... It. Everything needs to be flipped the to lights. the... Right-hand side. Um, clearly, that's not the solution. Let's see if that worked anyway, though. Maybe everything needs to be flipped to the left. We did it! All right! Okay, we are amazing. So let's tell Dexter we fixed it. Dexter, you're gonna fix my radiator now, buddy? Yes? I don't want to pester you, Mr. Egan, but <clears throat> the radiator... Thanks for dealing with the circuit breaker. Okay, we're really making progress here, kid. So, you go up to Hotchkiss's room and see what she wants for dinner. She's not answering her phone. No problem, boss. No problem, boss. I, I definitely have become Cinderella at this point. At least I'm not cleaning any fireplaces. Or being attacked by evil cats. Ugh! Virginia Woolf never endured such interruptions! Who is it? Hi, Professor. I thought you might be getting hungry in there. Could I relay a dinner order for you? Oh, hard to think of food candy when I'm riding the raging rapids of my theory. Oh, right now, I have plenty of pre-packaged energy globules to keep me going. But tell Baxter that I am developing a powerful craving for couscous. Yes, couscous for dinner would be splendid. I'll have a nice tip for you next time, Fanny. Globules! Energy globules! Let's talk to Dexter. Seriously, Dexter, can't you go up the stairs yourself at, at one point? He's still just playing around on yes. whatever. The professor says she has a hankering for, um, couscous. Couscous? Never heard of it. Tell her to order something off the menu. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Alrighty then. I've had couscous. I don't think it's that good. It's basically like rice, except they're in globule format. Is that my couscous already? Sorry, Professor, but there's no couscous in the house. You'll need to choose something from the hotel menu. Well, I don't have a menu. At least not from this hotel. Oh, oh, be a doll and, and fetch me one, will you? Ta-ta! So we actually do have the menu, which was inside Nancy's room. I'll just leave it here. I, I, did you get the menu? Sure did. How about opening the door so I can give it to you? Oh, you're a sneaky one. Just slip it under the door, please. 
Nice and easy. No funny stuff. I don't know why she's so protective, uh, but she is. Ooh, baby back ribs. Yes. Oh, chili cheese dog. Uh, 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 fried bologna sandwich. Uh, I'm not usually much of a meat eater, but uh, uh, very well. Fifty drumsticks, please. Uh, chicken, that is. Uh, cluck, cluck. Sure. Fifty drumsticks. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Rock and roll, dear. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so fifty chicken drumsticks. Sounds delicious. I wonder if she's gonna get sauce, though. Is she gonna get barbecue sauce? Is she gonna get ranch sauce? Spicy buffalo sauce, perhaps? Mmm, yeah. Can I help you? The professor has changed her order. Seems she's developed an appetite for chicken drumsticks. Fifty of them. Okay then, drumsticks we got. Oops, but I guess Jock better take that bag of chicken legs out of the freezer. Will you tell him? And then take the rest of the day off, kid. Your radiator's as good as fixed. Thanks, Mr. Egan. So what do you know about uh, Ezra Wickford's secret hiding thinking spot? So, do you know if Ezra Wickford had a place where he liked to go and think? Some place he thought of as a refuge? There was a private area of the garden. Yeah. The entrance was hidden, so no one could bother him there. Oh, can I go there? Were you allowed to go out there? Once in a while he'd bring me out there and teach me about his favorite flowers, but that was like a, a hundred years ago. Do you think I could go check it out? Forget about it. There's nothing out there but dead weeds and crumbling statues. But I really want to check it out, bro. It sounds so cool. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Bye, kiddo. Mm, well, we'll have to figure it out ourselves then. Then, uh, we need to go to Dexter, tell him to defrost the big bag of chicken wings. I wonder how many chicken wings they have in that bag. If we can order like 50, 50 chicken drumsticks, like it's nothing. Ah, uh, Nancy, como se va? Lisa told me you were in the Olympics. What was that like? Disappointing, frustrating, humiliating. Oh, what happened? It was the worst day of my life. To fall flat on my face with my family, my country, and the rest of the world watching. That's very, very sad. Can I get some chicken wings? Dexter needs you to defrost that big bag of chicken legs. Oh, la la la. What does he think I am? A sous chef. I'll talk to you later. Ciao. I am a little disappointed that Jock doesn't get mentioned in game number 16, White Wolf of Icicle Creek, where we have another, like, Olympic-level skier. <sighs> Just thought Jock would... We could totally mention Jock in that game. It would be cool if he returned. Or at least just got mentioned. I don't know. That's just me. So let's take the elevator back to Nancy's room. Wait, what? Oh no! Oh no, the elevator! We got, we got stuck in the elevator. Oh dear. Okay. So, um, yeah... That's not good. What we need to do is crawl out here. And then just sort of jump to safety? I don't think we can make this jump. Yeah, that is not a jump that we can make. Uh, we can make this jump, though. Oh, you. Woo! Okay. Made it. Good. Good, good. Where am I now? I am gonna make friends with Hotchkiss. That's what I'm gonna do now. I think we can talk to her once we finish the chore run. Is that you, Brandy? Oh, I'm glad you're here. At the moment, my theory is rising like a magnificent souffle. I need to collect a few more ingredients, if you will, but it's a delicate situation. If I leave my room even for a moment, I fear the souffle will come crashing down in a heap. She is making a she's making a souffle out of chicken wings, I believe. You're cooking a souffle in there? Oh, don't take me too literally, dear. What I need is some information about the castle. Hard numbers. 
I've come to the conclusion that you are an enterprising and faithful soul. Therefore, I have decided to entrust you with this important mission. Who knows? If you succeed, I might whisk you away from the hotel business to be my personal research assistant. Ooh, I wonder if that job pays well. Thanks for the vote of confidence, but I was just on my way to a big, fluffy couch. I am on vacation, you know. I see. Well, I don't suppose we have anything further to discuss. Goodbye. Bye. Never going to see you again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come on, Not Hotchkiss. Not now, please. I'm trying to think. Unless you've decided to help me. Nope. Just looking for someone to play Scrabble with me. <laughs> Very funny. Now, vamos. And let me work. No, seriously. Maybe we could play charades. Not now, please. I'm trying to think. Unless you've decided to help me. Nancy Drew, at your service. Marvelous! Here's what I need to know. How old was Marie Antoinette when she married King Louis? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with. But please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. Now, I want to find this big fluffy couch. That seems good. How old was she when she married him? Does anyone know the answer to that question? I, um, don't remember it off the top of my head. Was it in one of those random books I was reading earlier? Maybe it was in one of these books here. We've got two books here. Like this one is major events, okay. As a young teenager, okay, so seven, 1770 and she was born in 1755 so she would have been 25 years old that is not a young teenager hmm yeah everybody's saying 13 14 15 16 let's just guess because those those dates don't add up at all Do those dates add up? Am, am I crazy? I can math. 1770 mi 70 minus 55 is like 8, no, 5, uh, 15. That's 15. Let's go with 15. I don't know. 50 plus 25 is 75. That's an easy number I can remember. Let's go with 15 and hope that works. Yes. Did you find the information I asked you for? Yes. Sure did. Good, but I need you to write it down so I don't forget. Let's see if I got it right or if I had a math failure. Thank you. Let me do some calculations to see if this is correct. Eureka! There's one thing I like in a young person. It's ingenuity. Now, I've got work to do. Time to stir the cauldron and stoke the fire. But if you'd like to talk, I'll be holding office hours in the lobby between 3 and 6 a.m. Meet me then. All righty. So, 3 and 6 a.m. Let's meet her in her office, shall we? And then we'll do some exploring late night. Late night exploring. Now now that we've done all the chores, not only do we get to meet Professor Hotchkiss, but we have this. This thing is fancy too. So that is the oil can, which we will use to break into that secret area by, by the elevator. That's the right time. Did you say 3 a.m.? I've already proven I'm terrible at math, so... Oh, come on! I missed her! Are those chicken... chicken wings? Maybe she shows up... Maybe it was 3 a.m. instead of 2 a.m. Clearly cannot do math today. Hopefully there are no more math puzzles in this game. That would be nice.
It is amazing that Dexter actually fixed the radiator. He must have actually left his desk at some point. That's, that's pretty cool. There she is. Nancy, dear, welcome to the witching hour. Isn't it marvelous to be up and about when others are sound asleep? I find my brain waves are at their most powerful during this time. Our internet sleuths are saying that Marie was married in May, but her birthday is in November, so she technically was not 15. She was 14 years old when she was married. That's still creepy. I think both 15 and 14 are too creepy, way too young for her to be married to the guy who's going to become the king of France. Yes, I happen to do some of my best work in the middle of the night, too. So tell me, Professor, what is this theory you're working on? Well, you probably know by now that I'm a scholar of French history. <laughs> my specialty is Marie Antoinette. Oh, poor Marie. The most misunderstood queen of the 18th century, Marie used to visit the very tower that now belongs to this castle. I'm convinced that this place holds evidence that will forever change the way the world views Marie. But the walls have ears, so I'd rather not say any more right now. If you're really interested, why don't you go up to my room and have a look around yourself? You've been such a great help to me, almost like an apprentice. <laughs> oh. I've always wanted an apprentice. Oh, that's all right, Professor. I don't want to invade your privacy. I insist! Your mind is like a ravenous monkey gobbling up every banana in its path. Oh, how can I stand in the way? Here's my extra pass key. I get back to work at 6 a.m. sharp, so just make sure you vacate the premises by 5.59 and put things back where you find them. It's all scientifically organized in there. Everybody's saying that Professor Hotchkiss is wearing a wig. I, I don't think so. I, I think her hair is, is totally real and so is her green eyeshadow. I love it. She is amazing. Do you know anything about a tiara that was given to Marie Antoinette? The infamous tiara, of course. Oh, people thought Marie had this extravagant piece commissioned for herself, and they hated her for it. But really, it was her husband, King Louis XVI, who had it made for her birthday. Oh, she didn't want it, refused to wear it, and then, a few months before the revolution broke out, the tiara disappeared. Was it ever found? It was never found. There were rumors that she had it destroyed, but no one has ever been able to prove this. So, I mean, I think what Nancy's doing here is she's just asking Professor Hotchkiss questions about the book. It's like, hey, could you just tell me information from the book like I didn't already read that? Thank you. It's very nice. What did you mean when you said Marie Antoinette was misunderstood? Everyone thought Marie did nothing but spend France's money on jewels and fancy soap for herself while her people were starving. History books have upheld the myth that she was just a spoiled and heartless brat, but I don't believe it. No, she was amazing. Why not? I believe that she's been the victim of vicious rumors and lazy historians for too long and that if the real story could be told, people would realize that Marie Antoinette was actually a good woman who wanted to help her people, but didn't know how. See you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's actually break into Hotchkiss's room. That'll be fun. Well, it's not breaking into her room, considering she gave us the pass key, but still, still I want to check it out. And here are some of those chicken wings. Born November 2nd, a Scorpia like me. What a coincidence. Austrian birth name Maria Antonia, married off at 15. Oh, come on, Hotchkiss. You had that information written down in your room the whole time? Really? And she had to change her name, too. She must have been frightened. Her favorite color was purple, like me. I wonder if she adored chicken drumsticks. Despite the elaborate hairstyles that were the fashion of the day, Marie preferred to wear hair loose, unpowdered, and natural. Evidence that she was unpretentious. 
here there is no concrete evidence that she was the one who coldly declared, let them eat cake, in response to the news that her people were starving. Marie was immature, but not cruel. Interesting notes. Those are the ski boots. Glad to see the ski boots are here. And we have a little video. Testing. Can anyone hear me? Hotch kiss to Earth. Come in, Earth. Oh, okay. I think I think we're rolling. <clears throat> now, let's get a look at these hallways. So rich in detail. You'd never know this place was built in 1920. It's all so 18th C. Oh. And there's Marie. I feel so close to her, just being here. It's as if her spirit is in the air, sweet as the smell of fried chicken. <gasps> yes, Hotchkiss is definitely a huge Marie Antoinette fangirl. Definitely. And she really should have done a better job of charging her battery. We'll have to wait for the battery to be charged. Oh, hey, those are more of those drumsticks, aren't they? Yeah, she just has multiple plates full of her chicken drumsticks lying around. Okay, Baroness Helga von Hanseldorf. Bea, marvelous to receive news of your progress. I'm sure you are onto something important with the medallion and the stained glass window, but I think the significance of the medallion must go beyond what the message you've seen. I've looked through my family letters, and it seems when Marie Antoinette gave her niece, Helga the First, the medallion, she told Helga to keep it safe, as if it was part of a great truth that she hoped would someday heal the wounds of France. Helga urged to explain this great truth, but that all of that, Marie would only say, the truth can seem hard and ugly at first, but eventually its hardness becomes a thing of eternal beauty. Bea, you must find out the meaning of this. Keep up the good work, old friend. I know you will be successful. Helga von Dracula. I mean, Helga von Helsing. I, uh, Helga von Hanseldorf. Yes. That's her name. And there is nothing behind that pillow. Nope, nothing. Nothing behind that pillow. Why would you even, like, be asking about that pillow? It has nothing behind it. Nothing at all. And we do need to fix the elevator. I, I guess I'll fix the elevator. Otherwise, Dexter's just gonna be mad at me. I don't know, maybe I could tell Dexter to do it. Dexter, you need to do more work. Fix the elevator, buddy. Wait, I'm going in the wrong area, aren't I? Don't I need to break into the library, which is 3 star 7 2, and then that will get me to the elevator area. I always like this. You can kind of see the outline of a door. It's so obvious. How do you not know there's a secret door there? It's locked. It's locked. I have the key. All right, calm down, calm down. I got you, I got you, I got you right here. Okay, perfect, perfect. So now onto the elevator area. Hopefully the elevator is not in like a weird position, which will prevent me from accessing the down below areas. You can hear those strange sounds, listen to them. It sounds like somebody's running a, a hacksaw or something. It's stuck. And I've got an oil can. No longer stuck. Excellent. So now we can reach this down below area. Excellent. Oh, do you want to see the scary light? Isn't there like a scary death scene where Nancy gets squished by the elevator? I don't want to, I don't want to show that actually. That's gross. And now we have this puzzle. 
figure out the order to pull the levers in. to the solution, and then you have to restart from the beginning again. So what are those creepy noises? They are right here. <gasps> Nancy, what are you doing here? Uh, just looking for the soda machine. What are you doing here, bro? I was just looking for the castle soda pop machine. What you working on? I can explain, Nancy. But please, don't tell anyone that you found me here. If I get sent back to France, my fiancé will give up on me. And I will have let down my family again. What's your fiancé expecting you to accomplish by breaking into the Queen's Tower? I am doing this for my country and for my family's name. Isabelle has nothing to do with it, except that I feel I must succeed before I will feel worthy to marry her. The tower holds a valuable French historical document. If I can find it and return it to France, perhaps I can make up for my failure at the Olympics. What kind of document? The tower first belonged to the Chateau Rochemont in France. When Ezra Wickfield bought the tower, my great-grandfather was the master carpenter in charge of dismantling it and preparing it for shipment. One day, when he was working alone, he found a secret compartment in one of the walls. Then what happened? Inside, he found an old journal with a royal crest on the cover and a medallion with a strange blue stone in it. But he heard other carpenters coming, so he hid the medallion in his pocket and sealed the journal back in the compartment. Before he could get back to study the journal and return the medallion, the tower was dismantled and shipped to America. He never learned who the journal belonged to or what it said. Why didn't your great-grandfather tell anyone about his discovery? He thought if he told his story, Ezra Wickford might get angry, accuse him of interfering with the project, and try to ruin his name as a carpenter. So he kept quiet. So basically there's this medallion which is inside the tower. He's trying to find it in the journal. You know, that way he can restore his family's good name. I'm pretty sure that his fiance Isabel wouldn't actually care that much about finding an old medallion. She's like, oh, cool, you found your grandfather's old medallion. That's, that, that's nice. Can we get married now? So how do you know all of this? I was his only great-grandson. On his deathbed, he gave me the medallion and told me the whole story. He begged me to come here to Wisconsin to find the journal and return it to France. What did he think the journal contained that was so important? The journal bore a royal seal. It must have belonged to Marie Antoinette because she used to visit the tower during the revolution. So perhaps it contains her confessions or perhaps it contains proof of her innocence. Either way, the contents of that journal could change French history forever. But how do you think the medallion fits in? What's its significance? I have no idea. I believe whoever hid that journal must have left the medallion with it as a part of their message. B but what? Nancy, do you think you could help me? Let me show you this medallion and maybe you'll be able to tell me what it's for. <laughs> Everybody in the live stream chat is just ignoring the game and talking about soda right now. Soda, soda sounds good. I wouldn't mind getting some soda, soda pop right now. Some soda cola pop. I might be willing to help you, but you have to tell Christy everything. I'm sure she'll understand. And then you won't have to sneak around in the middle of the night, haunting the castle with that screeching hacksaw. Okay, Nancy, I see your point. I will explain everything to Christy Lane as soon as possible. Now will you help me? I think this medallion will interest you. And maybe you'll have some idea what it's for. It's in my locker. Uh, will you go get it while I take care of something? The combination is 2665. Six, I'll meet you in the locker room in a minute. 2665. Six, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll have to try to remember it. I don't know what exactly it is he leaves. Whatever his chore is. Maybe he's trying, trying to get soda. All right. 
Well, as long as you promise to tell Christy what's going on... Oh, you're the best, Nancy. Give me uh, just one moment here. That's what they tell me. Starting a poll uh, in, in the chat so people can tell me what, what, what... Do we call it soda or cola or pop? Um, some people call it Coke, too. I... I call it soda. I get soda. And we keep it in the basement, so we it's call... Locked. We actually call it basement soda in my household. It's locked. Is this not the key? I guess that's not the key. And yeah, wow, Jacques has been trying to cut open this for so long now, it makes me wonder if he's ever going to get it opened or not. Excellent. Let me... Uh, I mean, that's where the hidden hidden area comes out. It's that secret door. Okay, 100 votes, 64% soda, 28% pop, 8% cola. I guess nobody likes cola. Everybody just likes soda or pop. Pop, 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 the fun don't stop. What do you stop with? The pop, blop, blop. Let's go down. Actually, no, we've probably checked Hostkiss's room. Do you think her thing is fixed by now? That's the elevator reset. That should fix the elevator so it won't break down again. I'm going to check Hotchkiss's room, see if her thing is working. Oh, she's typing again? Oh, come on. Hotchkiss. And she just ignores me, even though I'm supposed to be her apprentice of all sorts? That's not very fair. I'm just gonna switch ahead in time. I'm just gonna sleep all day. Wow, it's 6.30 already? Okay. Set back to five. Just gonna sleep for 22 and a half hours. And now I'll be able to break into Hotchkiss's room. Oh wait, I still have her key card, that's right. I do find it interesting that Dexter never moved Nancy to a different room. That would have been an easy way to solve the problem of her broken radiator. He's got plenty of extra rooms. So let's see the rest of her video. Oh, ooh, what's this? It appears to be some kind of peephole, but what, pray, does it peep upon? Shall I peep? La la, I do believe I'll peep. <gasps> the beauty, the colors. So this is what Helga told me to look for. Where's my medallion? <gasps> it fits! Note to self, high five team Hotchkiss. And what's this? A message? Eureka! It says the diamond. That battery did not charge very long, did it? So the diamond something something or other, I think. I believe that's what it was. Diamond the diamond in the rough. Maybe, maybe that's what it says. Okay, so Jacques Locker is 2665. He's important, so his locker has like multiple thingies. Like Nancy Nancy's locker only had three digits, but his locker has four. Two. Six, six, five. 
All right, I kind of wish that um, we got like a close-up of this picture. I presume that's supposed to be Isabel, right? Jacques, darling, I'm trying to be patient, but I cannot understand what is taking you so long. My mother and father are traditional people, and they think it's highly unusual that you would ask me to marry you without demonstrating your commitment to me in any symbolic sort of way. You know, I believe our love makes us richer than kings and queens, but I cannot live on hot dogs and mac and cheese forever. You said you had a plan. You said it would only take a couple of weeks, but it has been two months. I can't wait forever. Please don't make me give up on you. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Ah. Uh, Jacques Brunet, our records indicate your visitor's visa will expire within a month, so you will be breaking the law. Oh, no! I don't want Jacques to get arrested, and he knows a lot about diamonds. Diamonds are pretty amazing. Fancy diamonds. Yes. Hey, there's one of his hope boxes. He's got, he's got like three of those hope boxes, I suppose. And here is everybody's favorite medallion. Uh. Ow! Ouch. Oh, someone must have knocked me out. Ow, ow, ow. Hey, headquarters. Nancy here. Nancy, it's Jacques. Uh, what happened? Are you okay? Uh, well, I got knocked unconscious. I don't really know what happened. I opened your locker, like you said, and then it was lights out, Nancy. But you do have my medallion, right? Um, no, I didn't touch it. It was the last thing I saw, but I sure don't have it now. Oh, la la, you can't be serious. I'm sorry, Jacques. I know how important that medallion was to you. This is too much. Oh la la. Unbelievable. I believe Dexter is the one who picked Nancy up and carried her to her bedroom. That's what I think. Yeah, well, it clearly wasn't Jock who picked her upstairs. I guess it could have been Hotchkiss or Lisa, but I, I think it was actually Dexter based on this conversation here. Thanks for coming down. I've been wanting to talk to you. How's your head? Did you slip or what? No, I got knocked out, buddy. Well, let's just say someone must be trying to tell me to get a little more rest on this vacation. Anyway, I'm planning on making a speedy recovery. It's just that when I found you out cold in the basement and hauled you back to your room, I noticed all this red dirt on your shoes. I'm just curious where it came from. Mr. Egan, I confess. I found my way into the corridor that leads to the Queen's Tower. As you probably know, the dirt in that tunnel is very red. I hope you won't consider this trespassing. Nope. If you must know, I'm impressed. Ezra Wickford set that secret door up so nobody would be able to find it. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with getting into that tower. Ezra told me that if I could get through the secret door, he'd take me up to see the Queen's Tower. Finally, I got into the tunnel, and when I came out with that red dirt all over me, he laughed. He was actually proud of me. Did Ezra Wickford have the dead-end corridors and stairways built on purpose, too? Yeah, Ezra was a character. He always said he thought dead ends were funny. Ha ha. But the truth was, he was worried sick about being robbed. Maybe it made him feel better to think that a crook would get caught this way. What a strange security system. So, was there ever a robbery? Well, not exactly. A mistake was made. Only a small thing, but it didn't take much for him to give up on people. Anyway, I'd say you earned the right to check out the tower for yourself. But you gotta get through that gate, right? There's an old skeleton key in the maintenance shed. Now that the storm's passed, you can go out and get it. But be careful. It's still dead cold out there. Alrighty. Wow, there's a lot to talk to him about. I was in the elevator, and it got stuck between floors. I had to climb out the top, and I just barely made it up to the floor above. Do you think you'll be able to fix it? Well, I doubt it's broken. I'll check the power switch in the basement. Glad you're okay. 
but don't go climbing around the elevator shaft anymore. It's dangerous in there. I don't want to press my luck with you, but I sure would like to see Ezra's private garden. Could you tell me how to find it? It's nothing but wasteland out there. If you're bent on tromping around in the cold, go left when you get outside, away from the shed. Look for a wrought iron gate. You'll figure out the rest. Alrighty, thank you, Mr. Egan. Okay, see ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. It's funny, like, he was talking about stealing $50, right? I don't know what, uh, uh, that could be what he was talking about, I suppose. Ever find out what Hotchkiss lost? Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna lie to Lisa again. Yeah, well, she still won't tell me what was stolen. Seems like she's suspicious of everyone. Fine, don't trust me. But don't expect me to cover for you next time you're snooping around in that elevator shaft. How did you know I was in the elevator shaft, Lisa? Can't you see I'm reading? Lisa, I... Can't you see I'm reading? Aww. I got her mad at me on purpose. Because I'm just sort of a mean person like that. But still, she, she was really spying on me this whole time. That's all I can say. Let's go see Jacques. Oh, I guess he's not here. Well, next time we see Jacques, he's just going to be mad and not want to hang out with me. So let's check out these two areas. To the left was the thinking spot. And we got the key to the thinking spot from that hidden room, I think. Oh! No key needed. Nice. So here's the thinking spot. I always kind of like this area. Kind of cool. We have the lions, which look like flying monkeys. Spin that around. That spins his head. And on the back of his head, we have the lever. That gives us this box. And yes, this is where the key is used. It gives us a medallion. Ugh, it's freezing out here. Gosh, I can hardly feel... Nancy's kind of whining because she's cold. I know it's cold, Nancy. You're back inside. You're nice and warm. Now let's explore again. Wait, where am I? I think I just got myself turned around. We want to explore here. This has that old skeleton key. Also that puzzle. Yeah, that's a puzzle. Let's see. What do we have here? Uh, it's a newspaper report about Dexter returning to this area. No comment. I don't want to talk about coming back here. Hmm. This is the diagram for the ski lift, unless I'm mistaken. Here's the key. Nice. Nice. And we'll find a medallion here at one point, just not quite yet. Great. Okay, so we found your medallion, Jock, I think, or not. Jock's still not here. Hmm, so I think the other medallion is going to magically appear inside Professor Hotchkiss's room. Maybe. Let's jump ahead in time and see if we have Professor Hotchkiss's room with a medallion inside it. Now that we know about the medallions and that the medallions exist, we can just sneak around and grab them, I think. I 
I guess the culprit, yeah, the culprit must deliberately wait for Nancy to learn about the medallions before putting one in Hotchkiss's room. There we go. We've got the blue medallion now. Let's explore the... Let's explore the Royal Tower, I suppose. It is kind of a long way to reach that Royal Tower. This is not the way to do it. I do love that victory music, though. It's great. Just a little victory music to let you know you've done something important. Like, I have the medallion now. Can I give it back to Jacques? No, I'm not talking to him. That guy's a jerk. <laughs> he, he had no concern for Nancy being knocked unconscious. So, it, because of his mean behavior, he will never get that medallion back. I think that's Nancy's reasoning. Or Nancy knows that she has to collect all three medallions for the mystery, and they are the key, the key to the mystery. So she's just holding on to them until the mystery's solved. I think this is the, the death scene here. Do I just stand in place and then uh, Nancy will get crushed by the elevator? I think she will. This is scary. It's going to be a scary death scene. Seems like they give, give you uh, a lot of time to try to solve the puzzle, though. They do give you time to escape. No. No. Yep. So that's that's the grim death scene. Oh hey, stairs. What do you know? Let's try to avoid it this time. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, please, four. Five, six, got it. So where is the red dirt that Jock, uh, that Dexter was talking about? I think it, no, there's no red dirt. I mean, the walls look more like red dirt than the floor here. I don't see any red dirt anywhere. Sorry. And how can he notice red dirt on Nancy's shoes, but no red dirt on Jock's shoes? What about that, huh? Well, here we are in the tower. We have to solve this puzzle. We want the chains to look like that. These chains. Yes. Oh man, this is tough, but I got it. Then, wow, this is a really long way to reach that tower. We have this puzzle. Ooh, that's a tough one. I think we do have to solve it. I'm trying to take a look at this little jail cell area to the left. It does sort of look like a jail cell, yeah. So to get the stairs to appear, we do need to solve that puzzle. Let's see if we can do it. Um, slider puzzle. This one's obviously going to be the last one because I could, I think I can slide that around safely. Um, no idea 
how I will do anything like to get the blue one into place. I think I'll have to do this. Maybe. No. Yeah, this is, huh. Blue is going to have to go like this. Like, yay, I've got the blue in, in place now. People are saying there should be a place where I can click on the red dirt. I'll look for it. Why not? But yeah, I can definitely get the eagle into place now. That's not so tough. Get orange into place, yellow, pink into place like that. How on earth am I gonna get lion into place though? Hmm. Lion would have to be, if I could get Lion here, but how would I do that? Something like this, maybe. So if I could get a piece over here on the, the, the left. No idea, hmm. That's how I get that final piece into place. So let's see. I something like this. Let's go like that. Let's somehow get that piece in that particular row. Like this. And then this down. That back. And then I just sort of hope I can get the pink perfectly into place. This, isn't it? Got it. Okay. Like that. Done. Okay, and this is why I should always play through a game before doing a live stream for it. Otherwise, I get get stuck and and such. That's that's a tricky puzzle, and we're going to be following this up with another really tricky puzzle. But this is cool to see the Queen's Tower. Like, this is a really cool room. I like it. Obviously, the medallions go there on the floor. This is another tricky puzzle. Let's see. because we're making a design. Let's see, I'm gonna try to get the corner pieces into place. 
There we go. That corner piece goes there. It looks perfect. So I guess that means the smaller corner pieces go in the bottom bottom corner, and then the larger corner pieces must go on the top. Of course, this begs the question of this... The left one, or does it go like this? I think it goes like this. I think we'll say those, those ones go here. Like this puzzle. This is like a 10 minute puzzle if you don't know what you're doing. Looks like the top row has just a long border with those things sticking out. So let's get all those ones there on the top row. And now we'll just try to sort them. It looks like those three look good. And then those three look good. Great. Now let's try to do the left and right hand side ones. It looks like they have a single line there. I can't tell if that left-hand side looks good or bad. I, I honestly cannot. That looks better. That looks like a better left-hand side. So let's assume these other two are right-hand siders. And that right-hand side looks good. Now let's get the bottom. The bottom has these pieces that are just sort of peeking out. the last one here. So now let's get these bottom pieces into place. No, I mean that one looks good. That one doesn't. There, so that looks like we've got the entire outer border all done. Just, just so difficult. It's, it's not an easy puzzle. That piece looked good, except that the, that doesn't connect. So I guess one way to do it is we'll just try every piece until we find the piece that goes in the upper, upper left of those those ones. That's it. That must be it. Okay, wow, those two pieces. Uh, look, those two pieces look great. Now let's find a piece which looks like it fits here. It's not that one. It... I don't think it's that one, but it might be? No. Let's try this. That looks good. Okay, now let's find the piece which goes here. Nope. Great. So left-hand side of the board is done. Now let's see if we can get this right-hand side done. There. I don't think we've got this. Got it. Okay, finally. That is just, yeah, it's difficult. Is there any red dirt around here that I can play with? I don't see any red dirt that I can zoom in on. Like, is it 
this wall? No. I'm not really seeing any dirt that you can zoom in on. Sorry. Just normal dirt. Oh well. What time is it? It is like 6.30, so... Do we want to try talking to Jock or Hotchkiss? Or Dexter? I don't think anybody's here. They're all asleep. They're all sleeping. Talk to Hotchkiss. People are definitely saying uh, Hotchkiss, so let's give her Marie Antoinette journal. Hello, my fellow night owl. Or perhaps I should say hoot hoot. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, did you find anything of interest in my room? It is a fantastic room. I did pop in there, though interesting doesn't begin to describe the place. Would you mind if I went back another time? Of course not. Pop in all you like, just not when I'm working. I saw a letter on your desk from your friend, the Baroness von Hanseldorf. And I'm just wondering, did the medallion she gave you have a blue stone in it by any chance? Heavens no! Where did you hear such a thing? My medallion had a green stone in it. Anything else would be a mere imposter. A flaming faker, do you hear me? Jeez, no do you get so angry. I have it right here in my hands. What do you think of Lisa Ostrom? That Leslie, yes, a oh, real dynamo, but... Uh, oh, I told Chester that I would not require any maid service during my stay. I don't know why she didn't get the message. Hmm... Lisa sneaking around Hotchkiss's room. Why would she do that? I'm the only one allowed to sneak into that room. I found something that I think you'll be very interested in. It seems to be some kind of journal. I think it was written by Marie Antoinette herself. What? Let me see that. <gasps> this is it. I've been trying to track this down for 15 years. Where on earth did you find it? Well, it's a long story. Well, it's a long story, but I happened to find a way into the Queen's Tower, where I happened to find a secret compartment. I think this must be what the Vandal was after. Nancy, I must warn you. I'll wrestle you for this if I have to, and it won't be pretty. I'm sure physical combat won't be necessary, Professor. I'm glad to help you with your work, but I need your assistance in return. You're fluent in French, aren't you? Absolutely. I'll get to work on it right away. I'll have the translation ready in my room for you this time tomorrow. Until then, I mustn't be disturbed. Fantastic. So she's going to give us a translation of the diary. Let's get that done. Yeah, let's do that right now. Hmm. I don't think I've heard this music before. This is the music we usually hear everywhere. All right, so Hotchkiss, have you translated the journal? I'm so glad you stopped by. I've translated the entire journal. It's fabulous. And as an added bonus, it includes Marie's official decoder, something no one else has ever found before. See you soon. Goodbye. Does she ever give us the journal? No, she just keeps the journal. She does not give the journal back. Okay. That's not good. 
Well, we're gonna get the official translator. From her room. There's the journal. So, my husband is like an impossible child. I still cannot believe Louis brought me this tiara when the French economy is in so much trouble. I love the tiara dismantled. La 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 la. Okay, so. <clears throat> Honor is blue, courage is red, loyalty is green. Ah, ah, that is the puzzle. I want to see her official decoder. It's over it here on the like left. It looks like some sort of decoder. Each of these symbols stands for a certain word. Hmm. Nice. We haven't seen the symbols yet, so Nancy can't really do that translation. Let's look at these symbols now. Blue, there's red, we still need green. So in order to get the last medallion, we need to talk to Lisa. Because Lisa's still angry at us, I think Lisa's still angry at us. We have to get a phone call from her instead. So let's check our phone messages. Welcome to the voicemail system. Please press zero to retrieve messages. To leave the system, please press three. First message. Yeah, Miss Drew, this is Dexter at the front desk. Can you come down when you're feeling better? I need to talk to you for a minute. Thanks. To go to the next message, press two. To second message. Nancy, this is your mentor speaking. Things are looking uncommonly out of sorts in here. I just hope I haven't had another intruder. Please remember that passkey I gave you is not for sharing. To go to the next message, press two. Third message. Hi, Nance. It's Lisa. Sorry if I acted like a brat before. This article's got me a little stressed. Anyway, we have to be friends so we can gossip about all the suspicious activity around here, right? Wait till you hear what I just saw. Come talk. Bye. To leave the system, please press 3. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, let's call Nancy's friends. Somebody pointed out I forgot to call Nancy's friends throughout this entire game. Which is not very nice of me. Hi, you've reached Ned at Omega Chi Epsilon. I'm not here to take Ned. your call right now, so please try again later. Thanks. Well, no wonder I couldn't talk to Ned earlier. He's just not on the phone. Ned, don't you know you should be sitting by your phone all day, every day, waiting for me to call you? Hello? George, it's Nancy. Great timing, Nancy. Bess and I were just saying how we wish we were out on the ski slopes with you. Hang on, I'll get her to pick up the other phone. Hey, Bess, our favorite detective's on the phone. Hey, Nancy, how's the vacation? I guess you haven't gotten my letter. Not only do I have a blizzard on my hands, but I may have stumbled onto another case, too. The castle library was vandalized, and one of the other guests says her room was robbed. Boy, oh boy! Have you searched the library for clues yet? Well, that's the thing. Dexter Egan, the caretaker, says it's locked up and off limits until the police can get here. But who knows when that'll be. That's funny, Nancy. I didn't know the phrase off limits was even in your vocabulary. Seriously, though, don't you think that your dad's friend, Christy Lane, would feel better knowing that you're on the case, at least until the police can take over? She's right, Nancy. I mean, who knows what this Egan guy is all about anyway? Sounds like you're just going to have to find an alternative entrance to that library. Here I go again. Just hope I don't have to slide down the chimney. And what about this robbery? Who got robbed? I'm not sure. The guest's name is Professor Hodgkiss. I think she's a bit eccentric. You mean weird? Netso? A few sandwiches short of a picnic? Okay, you guys. I just mean that I'm not sure how reliable her testimony will be. Yeah, but she'll probably tell you something important. 
whether she means to or not. I met this nice woman, Lisa Ostrom. What's her deal? She's a photojournalist doing a story on the castle. She sure got me curious about that tower. Oh, yeah? Does she know where the entrance is? I don't think so. Well, keep an eye on her, Nancy. Those photojournalists are born snoopers, you know. George, are you suggesting that Nancy is a second-class snooper? You're going to give our friend a complex. Oh, right. Like Nancy doesn't know she's the prime minister of snooping. The prime minister. Nancy got a promotion. Jeez. I found Ezra Wickford's secret garden. You'll never guess what Dexter's boyhood luck charm was. Hmm, a rabbit's foot? A little green leprechaun? Guess again. A medallion with a red stone in it. Do you think I should give it back to Dexter? Oh yeah, like honesty is the best policy with creepy convicts? I think George is politely trying to say that you should find out what the medallion's for before you breathe a word of it to anyone. You'll probably need it to solve this mystery. So that's why Nancy didn't give the medallion back. That's why she kept it for herself. She needs it to solve the mystery. I met my ski instructor, Jacques Brunet. He sure is French. Ooh la la, those accents should be illegal. I hate to break it to you, Bess, but uh, he's engaged. Now there's a real crime. Right, Bess. Humanity is devastated. Wickford wrote Dexter a farewell poem before he died. The inventor of chocolate milk was a poet, too? Yum. I could write a poem or two about chocolate milk. It says that he hid some sort of luck charm for Dexter to find. Where? Something about his old thinking spot somewhere out in the garden. Funny, but I didn't see any garden when I came in. Well, you can't exactly tiptoe through the tulips when they're buried under six feet of snow. Never mind my cheeky cousin over there, Nancy. When the storm passes, you should go out and see what you can find. I went back to check out Jacques' locker, and I found a pamphlet about diamonds, a letter from his fiancée, and a warning notice from immigration. Did his fiancé sound cute in her letter? Actually, she sounded upset. She wants him to hurry up and do something, but I'm not sure what. Sounds like that guy is under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I hope he's not marrying her just to stay in the country. This is so weird. I found the blue medallion from Jacques' locker in Hotchkiss's room, but she says her medallion had a green stone. Wow, Nancy. Sounds like you need a personal medallion assistant just to keep track. You're not kidding. But does this mean that Hotchkiss is the one who conked me over the head? Do you think I should return Jacques' medallion to him? For now, you should keep all of your discoveries to yourself, Nancy. Except tell us everything, of course. Yeah, we will definitely not be sharing medallions today. Ladies, I need inspiration. Brain juice. A hint. Sure, Nancy, but don't expect us to give you the answers on a silver platter. We wouldn't want to spoil your fun. Seeing as you're a senior detective and all. Help, I'm a little stuck. Maybe you should talk to Lisa and see what she's been up to. Okay, you two. I'll talk to you soon. Good luck. Be careful. Alrighty, let's go talk to Lisa then. That's exactly what our friend said. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Down the stairs. No, not up the stairs. Down the stairs. Glad you came down to talk. Get this. I saw Dexter walking out to the maintenance shack with this, like, green ornament thing in his hand. He's up to something, right? Maybe you should check it out. Thanks for the tip, Lisa. I think I will. Wanna come along? Thanks, Nancy, but you're the brainiac. I'll just guard this comfy chair and wait for your report. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Stay warm. Thanks, Lisa. Why can't we just talk to Dexter? Hey there, Nancy. Alrighty, yeah, we, we could talk to him about some stuff. Why are those holes in the crest on the floor of the tower room? I can help you, but we shouldn't talk about it now. Not here. Call me later. Oh. I'm trying to get into the tower, but I can't get across that big pit. I can help you, but we shouldn't talk about it now. Not here. Call me later. You've been holding out on me, Mr. Egan. I read in an old issue of the Daily Telegraph that you grew up here, right in this castle. All right. I did live here for a few years, once upon a time. I was an orphan until Ezra Wickford came along and adopted me. But I left the castle when I was 16, and I never saw him again. 
that's the story, all right? But why did you leave? But why did you leave? Some things can't be explained, kid. It was a long time ago, and nothing can change it now. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. He really doesn't want to talk about the fact that he, well, wrote bad checks and got his adopted father very angry at him. And then ended up in jail. Which I can understand. He doesn't want to share gossip about his life with this random teenager. Although he does seem to like Nancy. Told her how to get into the, the tower, after all. Nancy, I still cannot believe you lost my medallion. How could you have been so careless? Hey, 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 I wasn't careless, buddy. Why did you send me to get your medallion in the first place? Was that some kind of setup? Setup? What are you talking about? All I know is my medallion is gone. I should never have trusted you. My sentiments exactly. Goodbye. Au revoir, little Miss Nightmare. Look, keep the stupid medallion. It's yours. I have the medallion. Do you want it? Look. Keep the stupid medallion. It's yours. All right. He does not want it. So Jacques is angry and will refuse to talk to me ever, 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 ever again. And the medallion is going to be hidden down here. Like I said, where? This, this one. It's a rat. Yuck. Hanging around the medallion, being all creepy and stuff. Ugh. Not a fan. I out. If I don't get inside soon, I'll freeze to death. We have scary music and victory music at the same time. I'm so confused. Am I scared or victorious? Nancy's just been locked out. She needs to find a way to get herself back inside. So it's going to be two one, three, I, I think. Two, one, three, and we need to do it before Nancy freezes. Here. Is that not it? Huh? There, got it. What the? What's going on out here? Is that you, Nancy? <sighs> Come inside. It's freezing out here. What kind of a stunt was that, Missy? Hey, 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 I was freezing to death, sir. I was freezing. That stunt was my version of an SOS. Well then, what can I say except good thinking? Hey there, Nancy. Okay. Oh yeah, See we still need to call Egan. him. Goodbye. I'll do that. I'll do that. We'll call him. Hey, Lisa. I almost got killed. Nancy, I heard you got locked out. You could have frozen to death. So, what was Dexter hiding out there? Good thing I'm not the type to let frostbite interfere with my love of trespassing, huh? Too bad I didn't find anything. Huh. I thought for sure I was on to something. I still think Dexter's shady. I'd keep an eye on him if I were you. Yeah, I'm going to keep my eye on you, Lisa. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Later, Nancy. So we're basically at the end of the game right right now. Once we once you have all three medallions, you can go to the tower room and get to the end of the game. I do think we might need to take a look at the the thing. This, oh, what's the new medallion? Is the new medallion the green one? Because we want to see all those symbols. Is Nancy going to translate it? No, Nancy, Nancy, I guess Nancy translates it when she sees Hotchkiss's journal thing. So we'll do this. Skip ahead in time to Hotchkiss's journal area. I don't even think that sentence makes sense. Anyway, we'll, we'll, I'll sneak into Hotchkiss's room, but first let's call Dexter. This is Dexter. 
Hey, Dexter. It's Nancy. Hoping you can help me now. But why the sudden hush-hush? Do you smell a rat? The information you request is highly sensitive, young lady. That's top secret in case you were wondering. Now, I've been around the block a few times, and if there's one thing I've learned, it's that you can't be too careful. If you want answers, we do it my way, see? Sure thing, Mr. Egan. I just hope the phone's not bugged. All right, all right. Just give me the question. What's up with those holes in the crest on the floor of the tower room? I've always wondered that myself. Seems like something's missing from the crest. Like different objects should fit in those holes, but I don't know what. What other questions do you got? I think that's it for now. Thanks, Dexter. Let's see if we can call Ned now. Maybe he has returned from his frat party. Hello? Hi, it's me. That's How's not it going, Ned. Nancy? Are things calming down around the castle? Not unless you find it calming to climb out of a stuck elevator. What do you mean, stuck? The elevator broke down? Well, that's what I thought. Until I talked to Dexter, who said it was probably the power switch in the basement. But, Nancy, how could the power switch just go off while you were in the elevator? Maybe someone turned it off. But why? That's what I'm wondering. How did you climb out anyway? I climbed through a hatch in the roof of the cab and just barely made it up to the next floor. So you were standing on top of the elevator in the open shaft, way up high? Ugh, just the thought of it makes my stomach do somersaults. Anything interesting in the elevator shaft? Just a metal ladder leading up to this ventilation duct or something. Nothing unusual, except that the cover for the duct looked like it was about to fall off. Hmm. Maybe someone needed to inspect the duct and forgot to replace the grate? Or maybe the duct leads somewhere, like to buried gold or a hidden... Bess, that was Nancy's last case. She's in Wisconsin now, not San Francisco. Okay, you two. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it is kind of funny how Dexter is willing to talk to you about top secret information. Like, where is he standing when he talks to Nancy on the phone? Is he standing in his normal spot in the lobby? In which case, it's not a very secure location. Lisa can overhear everything Dexter's saying. Hello? Ned, it's me! Well, you're a sound for sore ears. Bess called me and told me your vacation is rapidly turning into another mystery. So what's the latest? I think whatever is going on around here must have something to do with the castle's history and the tower that Ezra Wickford imported from France. What do you mean? It's just a hunch. I'll know more once I find my way into the tower. What's going on with you? Ah, uh, the usual. Just buried in books over here. How do you think Professor Hotchkiss ended up with Marie Antoinette's green medallion? It sounds like Marie gave the medallion to the family of that Baroness Helga in Austria. Maybe Helga gave it to Hotchkiss when they became friends in order to help with her research. Put on your thinking cap. I need a hint. I'd like to help, Nancy, but I think you'd better ask Bess and George. My brain is still recovering from midterms. Bye, Ned. Bye. Oh, Ned. Alrighty. So as I said, we need to check that diary again. I think I'm just being extra careful. And then we'll we'll basically start the end game challenge. Woohoo! Now that we have all the medallions. I think I see what the symbols in the stained glass mean now. Let's see. Purple rose, hold diamond, key of queen. But where have I seen a purple rose? And what's a diamond key? <laughs> so let's see. Honor is blue, courage is red, and loyalty is green. So loyalty is the fleur-de-lis. So fleur-de-lis is green. And we've got honor in, what was it? What was the third one? Honor, loyalty.
loyalty and courage. So let's see if courage is an easy one I can remember. Courage is... Nope, nope, can't do it. Okay. Fleur de Lis is green. Let's go with that. I'll go with that as the one symbol I can remember. Yes, I do believe you need to look at the medallion. I mean... Look at that area through all three medallions, and then that will trigger Nancy having that particular conversation. And that will be the end game sequence. So we're going back to the Royal Tower. We're going to do the Purple Rose Queen Key. It's locked. Some people are saying talk to Hotchkiss. Okay, let me uh, do that. Let's say talk to Hotchkiss. Just because going through the library is a pain. So I'll just go talk to Hotchkiss here, see if she's got anything new to say. And then I'll just reload from where I was. Hotchkiss. To the right, to the right, to the left, to the left, to the right. It was to the left. Hello there. Oh, it's so exciting about your discovery. I wonder what it will lead to. She can translate those three phrases we saw through the, the medallions. What does l'espoir à ceux qui cherchent mean? Hmm, let's see. Well, espoir is hope. And cherche is to search. Hope to those who search. Can you translate this for me? Le diamant de misère dans mon journal. Now, where the heck have I seen that phrase before? Well, well anyway, it means the diamond of misery in my journal. Can you tell me what this means in English? La solution se trouve dedans. Well, trouver is to find. And solution is just like it sounds. Solution. The solution is found within. See you soon. Right-o. Excellent. All right, so now let's do talk to Hotchkiss. Just reloading from where I was, saving myself like a minute or two, having to go through the library again. change every single time we try to solve it. That, that doesn't help me remembering the solution to the puzzle. It's different every time. Oh, come on. Got it. Okay. Got it. Good. That's good. We made it through. It's locked. I have the key. Oh, this puzzle reset itself. I wonder why that puzzle reset itself. Very odd. Hopefully the other one did not reset itself because that puzzle is a nightmare. That's a dead end. There we go. We go through here. That puzzle did not reset itself. Great. Okay. Good. 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 So, purple rose, hold diamond, key of queen. We take this. We got it from the, the suit of armor right outside the entrance to the queen's tower. There we go. So now we have the diamond 
Mikey. I feel terrible just destroying that fantastic mural. Oh my gosh, how much work must have gone into that. And I destroyed it like there is no tomorrow. So green is Fleur de Lis. And then let's just guess what the other two are. Is it blue and then red? Looks like a keyhole of some sort. No, Nancy's not accepting blue and red. Well, then let's try red and blue. That's it. Woohoo! The diamond. Woo! Well, you look at that sparkly rock. And me without my sunglasses. Hi, Lisa. How did you get in here? I followed you, of course. Turns out a nosy goody two shoes detective is good to have around after all. Now, why don't you toss me that big honkin' diamond so I can blow this popsicle stand and never set foot in Lamo, Wisconsin again? Lisa, you must be kidding me. This diamond belongs in a museum in France. <laughs> yeah? Well, I belong in the lap of luxury, and that diamond's gonna get me there. Hasn't anybody ever told you to mind your own business? Oh, many times. Well, maybe this time you'll learn. My eyes! Don't worry. My spicy devil villain venom won't last for long. But I'm afraid by the time you get your eyes back, you'll have missed my grand exit. Oh no! So Lisa's the culprit. She was manipulating me all along just so she could get that fabulous diamond. You fiend! So, are you the one who knocked me out in the locker? Are you the one who caught me on the head in the locker room? Ouch! <laughs> I bet that hurt. But I had to get the medallion somehow, didn't I? I hope we can still be friends. Why did you need the medallion? Because you just gave the medallion back to me afterwards. Why did you leave Jacques' medallion at Hotchkiss's room? <coughs> and Hotchkiss's medallion out in the shed? To spread suspicion around, of course. You know, to play with your mind. Plus, I was at a dead end. I got the two messages from the stained glass window, but then what? I knew you would figure it out, so I decided to put the medallions in your hands and let you lead the way. Okay, I guess that makes sense. She, she wanted the medallion, she tried to solve the puzzle on her own, and then she just gave up and decided, eh, Nancy can do it for me. But the library was so beautiful, how did you hurt those books? Why did you have to vandalize that beautiful library? Just a little translation mix-up. When I read the message from Hotchkiss's medallion, I thought it meant Diamond of Misery in the library. Whoops, <laughs> guess I went a little overboard looking for it in there. Anyway, enough with the questions, Nancy. You'll just have to read the rest in the papers. I've got to stop her. All right, so the way to stop her is by pressing this button. Ah, it's really help! simple. Help! Get me out of here! It stinks down here. It's all moldy. Darn you, Nancy Drew. You're the worst friend a diamond thief could ever have. Yeah, well, you're Dear a bad Dad, friend, too. I think I almost became friends with a diamond thief. Everyone at Wickford Castle is resting easier now that Marie Antoinette's journal and her famous diamond are safe and sound. The journal, the diamond, and the medallions are all going to be featured in a new Marie Antoinette exhibit in Paris. And it looks like everyone will be rewarded. <laughs> Except Lisa, of course. First, she missed her plane to Rio, and now she's going to be charged with attempted grand theft. Professor Hodgkiss is thrilled because the French government has granted her permission to publish Marie's journal in the U.S. before it gets returned to France. This ought to help prove her theory about Marie's character once and for all. Thanks to Jacques and his great-grandfather's efforts to find the journal, the Brunet name is being celebrated all over France. In the meantime, Jacques and Isabel have eloped. It's so romantic. I showed Dexter the poem that Ezra Wickford wrote him, and he was relieved to know that his old pop didn't carry any hard feelings to his grave. All the talk shows want Dexter to tell his story on national television, but he keeps turning them down. I guess he doesn't want to be famous or infamous. But when Christy Lane called and asked Dexter to be her business partner, he accepted. With her business sense and Dexter's expert knowledge of the castle, I think they'll make a great team. So, you know what they say, Dad. Il n'est jamais trop tard de changer l'histoire. It's never too late to change history. Me, 
I'm determined to go out and enjoy this snow before some other case comes up. See you soon. Love, Nancy. I can't believe Jacques got credit for solving the mystery. He did basically nothing. Like, imagine if Nancy hadn't seen Jacques trying to break into the area. Well, then I guess she wouldn't have gotten his medallion. I guess that was how he was relevant to the story. Nancy totally would have gone into the Queen's Tower without Jacques' help, right? All she needed from Jacques was that medallion. I guess she could have figured out he had it and robbed him, but that, that wouldn't have been very nice. <laughs> but, yeah. I like how Dexter got credit, but did Nancy get any credit for finding the diamond? Nancy deserves some of the credit. Like, everybody gets a happy ending. I'm glad everybody gets a happy ending, actually. That's good. But yeah, Nancy Nancy definitely deserved deserved some more credit for her role in solving the mystery. Do 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 Yeah, this was a fun game. I really like this game. This game it's good. I love the characters. The characters are fun. I wish we got to have a little bit more with Jock outside of, you know, like the second half of the game, he just gets mad at you and that's it. That's basically it. I kind of wish we had more to do with him, but I kind of wish we had more to do with all the characters, though. They're so much fun. I wish we could hang out with them even more. I really like Dexter's sad backstory. I feel that that was well done. Hotchkiss is just funny and memorable. She shows up in multiple games in the series after this. Jacques never gets mentioned again. I I think he was basically there because they wanted to have a really good-looking guy in this game, and so they went with Jacques. And Lisa, obviously, is the culprit. Okay, so that is it for the fourth game of the Nancy Drew series. That's Nancy Drew Treasure in the Royal Tower. I always forget if it's Treasure in a Royal Tower or the Royal Tower. Yeah! I kind of wish we got to see the tower from the outside. They mentioned, oh, you saw the tower when you were driving up. But Nancy never gets to see the tower from the outside, and that's kind of sad. But other than that, very fun game. I feel like it's well done. I, I give it a high score. So like both this and Message in a Haunted Mansion, I'd probably give like a 9 or a, a 10 out of 10. I think I like this one a little better than Message in a Haunted Mansion because that final puzzle in Message in a Haunted Mansion is really tough with because, you know, with those Chinese symbols. That's kind of tough. Whereas I, I feel like this has um, a sort of easier <laughs> ending, so I kind of like it better. I don't know what that says about me. Maybe that just says I'm I'm not very good at video games and I, I like easier ones. Oh well, thanks for watching everybody.